Happy Monday and welcome to Love at Lunch. Today we are talking all things flourishing. We are looking at the science of what some call happiness or contentment, what I call joy because it's much easier to spell. And Martin Seligman, who is the father of positive psychology, calls it flourishing. There are five components. Last time we spoke, we spoke about creating opportunities to feel more positive emotions and we looked at a number of techniques that provide that opportunity. Today, we're talking about engagement. And we're not talking the blingy engagement, although that can spark some joy. Um, we're talking about engagement where we think of engaging in activities in our lives that require a level of concentration. Uh, it's a, a period of time that we would lose track of time and we find enjoyment in what we do. And perhaps it takes some expertise as well. So now, if you would not know is something <laughs> that delights you and that you engage in, uh, if it smacked you in the face, then there are some ways to find out what creates that sense of engagement or what um, psychologists call flow in our lives. So I see some of you joining and some of you are incredibly talented planners, um, incredibly uh, gifted uh, decorators, those are all part of that engagement. Um, and so three ways that you can, uh, if you're not quite sure around where you feel engaged, then you can start to look. So um, one of the first one is maybe it's something you used to do previously. You've got a beautiful camera and a camera bag in the bottom of your closet and you're like, I used to love taking photographs. Maybe you love taking photographs of a certain thing and now that doesn't really appeal to you, but maybe there's something still there about capturing things in the moment or creating something beautiful out of a moment that is still engaging. So that's something to think about, something that you've done in the past. Another piece which I love because it's very playful is thinking about what you did as a kid. So often as a kid, I was spent a lot of time creating things, painting, doing all the things. I also spent a lot of time torturing my younger sister while I stood at a back blackboard and taught her lots of things. So <laughs> there's no mistake that I facilitate now professionally and I find a lot of engagement in creating presentations and doing those kinds of things. But obviously I cannot do that 24 seven. So thinking of those things that you did as a young child that you enjoyed. So if you were always out on an outdoor adventure, then maybe part of where you would feel engagement now is back outdoors. So making sure that you commit to spending time doing that. Looking at places that we feel engaged can also be vulnerable because I spent a lot of time drawing and creating, but I certainly am not a Picasso or a Van Gogh. Um, and so, it involves a certain level of permission to say, hey, I may not be really good at this, but I'm gonna dive back into this. So um, if you are on my blog, I'm sending out something, a watercolor that I did recently, um, not because I'm super talented by any means. Uh, in fact, oftentimes I look up on YouTube uh, child watercolor because that's like really my level. Um, but it gives me that feeling of engagement. So engagement can be vulnerable to step into, but you wanna give yourself permission to step into it so that you can feel the feeling and not be worried about the outcome. The third place that we can start to explore engagement is what we are curious about. And so if you are curious about something, that is one of those places that is a great place to explore to see if there's something there. And again, the whole thing about engagement, I mean, setting some goals is nice to say, I am going to sit down and watercolor for a half an hour. That's fine, but don't set a goal as far as what the outcome is going to look like. Like I am going to create a, you know, uh, oil painting on canvas that I'm going to put in, you know, a, a display. Play, if it's your first time, <laughs> if it's your second or third, maybe set that goal. Um, because the whole point is just to be engaged without being attached to it being perfect. So if you are curious about something, maybe it's you're like, I'd love to, I wonder what it'd be like to start tomatoes from a seed. A lot of us might dismiss it and go, really? Like, who cares? Don't do it. Give in to your curiosity in order to see 
what comes up. Maybe you're curious about developing a new software. Uh, <laughs> I have never been curious about that. But there are some very skilled creators and innovators, and this is how it starts, with being curious. So give in to where you feel curious and notice what comes up. The key is to know that engagement, and not just in a work setting, is really important to bolster well-being, to improve our resilience, to increase positive emotions, and if nothing else, I feel like it's super important because we lose track, lose track of time. And now during the vid, it feels like a lot of things just blend together. So it can be really important. So explore where you feel like engagement might be hiding around a corner or give in to more opportunities where you feel that flow and level of engagement and you will notice that you feel happier and your joy increases. In the meantime, I will be making watercolor uh, cards for my friends and um, sending them out. In the meantime, have a beautiful engaged week. Lots of love to you all and happy, happy Monday.